Hello. Sorry I've been absent the past few days. I've been working really hard to get ready for my friends to come up here. They have a farm in Kentucky, and they're moving up here. And uh, I'll be busy, completely busy, at their farm uh, for five days next week, helping them uh, unload uh, two giant uh, trailer loads full of stuff where they're moving to their Kentucky farm. They're really excited about it. It's going to be brutally cold, so i got to make sure i got to whip out all that really extreme warm weather Cold weather, hello, <laughs> make you warm. Cold weather gear uh, for next week when they fly up here on Tuesday. I'll be uh, down at their farm and two tractor trailer loads of stuff are coming in. <clears throat> um, we're going to talk about this, this is incredibly important, and this is something that is really the number one most vitally important thing to learn, and it's not taught in high school or college, and your parents, to be sure. Uh, it might be on a piece of, uh, <laughs> I thought it was, had like a piece of leather on the floor. It's like, why won't my seat move? I thought it was like a piece of leather down there. Not taught you. And uh, there's no such thing as an authority in a debate. It just doesn't exist. And there's a danger of uh, delegitimizing everybody. This is where any sort of uh, crackpot nonsense, um, you know, be, could be considered equally valid. And uh, obviously we don't want somebody that doesn't have any training to, you know, like fix our broken bones and whatnot. Obviously so. We want somebody with skills. And then, of course, well, you know, they have a certificate hanging on the wall and, you know, they're an authority. And there's no such thing as an authority in a debate. They either have the skills or they don't. And so there's a danger both ways. There's a serious danger on both ends, actually. But uh, the past up teen... Uh, number of years and decades, there's a serious uh, issue where people will bow down to this assumed authority where nobody actually has any authority. And uh, do I need to point out to you, and I'll make it in a roundabout fashion, countless millions of people in the past few years have perished, including my uh, two friends, uh, Steve Skolsky and uh, my buddy Mark. They perished at the hands of authority, because, well, that person's an authority. You know, they have a degree. You know, they've uh, got a white lab coat and a stethoscope around their neck. And these are people that have fallen victim to this authority nonsense. I get emails and comments all the time, and this is not a particular uh, unique one, but I like to talk about a few different things, and this is not just about quantum. Talk about a few different things in this video that I got, and I looked this guy up, and he works for Intel, the Intel company, you know, the computer chip manufacturer. Got a couple degrees, and none of that's of any importance. I actually found some YouTube videos about the guy, actually before uh, I even knew what he wrote to me in the comments here, which I'm about to read to you. If I'm just looking at the videos, like, yeah, I know exactly the way this guy leans, you know, he's... Uh, he completely brainwashed by the stuff he was told to believe in. And by the way, this is exactly um, what a peer review is. This is where you have a bunch of uh, idiots that actually all think alike, agreeing with their all, all each other's nonsense. It's no different than a group of dogs, each sniffing uh, each one's uh, dirty little, uh, dirty little uh, brown stamp on the back end of the dog. You know, the one dog sniffing the dirty brown stamp, and that dog sniffing another dirty brown stamp. And kind of goes around in a circle. That's what a peer review is. So I'm going to read this, and it's not particularly spe uh, special because I've seen this all the time. I get emails and comments like this, but I'd like to point out things and actually go down and talk about um, authority and actually dismantle this idea of quantum, by the way. And he wrote, so do not assume, however, that such abuse uh, uh, darns the entire, uh, I says dams, the entire field of quantum physics. With quantum physics, I can explain the entire structure of molecules and the nature of chemical reactions. Actually, before this word quantum ever existed, and I'm going to give you the history of it, they actually explain uh, molecules and chemical reactions without that word, so that's a complete and total lie. I can derive the details of spectromolecular and atomic systems. None of this has anything to do with the, uh, the imaginary word quantum. Uh, the physics behind semiconductors is based on quantum physics. Actually, that's a claim, and that's completely untrue. I will also, too, point out to you the fact that the gods of field theory and the people that built their entire electrical grid the world over is just a handful of people. That is Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, Nikola Tesla, James Kirk Maxwell. 
these people never use the term and it is not found in any equation that makes stations, substations, power generation systems, none of this stuff has anything to do with this imaginary word quantum, which I'm about to dissect here. So this is complete and absolute poppycock. Uh, people say, well, what about a quantum computer? It's like, oh, I can call my microwave a quantum heating device, but that doesn't give reification to the term quantum. It's absolute poppycock. Um, he says, your abuse of the memory of Richard Feynman, one of the greatest physicists of his generation. Well, I have this guy's books. I've told everybody there's like a thousand copies of this video. It's like seven minutes and 32 seconds long. Type in Feynman explains magnetism. His name, last name is F-E-Y-N-M-A-N. -E you can go watch it. You watch this guy squiggle and wor uh, worm around in his chair, and he talks about an old woman slipping on the ice. Him and everybody like him thinks that this guy is a god of uh, quantum physics, but I have his books. I know what he does say. You know, the fat, bald, tattooed monkey here before you actually knows the entire history and use, uh, denotation, connotation, and context of usage, how these people use the word quantum. These are the people that are considered authorities. But they can't argue anything, they can't debate anything. Every time you see a comment by the comment that I'm reading here uh, from a person like that, they never, ever, ever, ever back up anything they say. They make a bunch of baseless claims without any evidence, without any substantiation. There at least needs to be some logic behind it. If you can't give me demonstrable evidences, at least provide a chain of logic and reason behind it. And they never, ever, ever do that. Anyway, one of the greatest physicists of his generation, because apparently you lack the background in physics and mathematics. Well, actually, I have a significant background in physics, my lifelong uh, study of same, to follow his work and don't justify your abuse of the man. Well, I'm not abusing him. I'm telling you to go type in Feynman Explains Magnetism, a, a thousand copies of the same seven-minute video on YouTube, and watch it for yourself. Yeah, it's a perfect IQ test for you. Just watch this man in his high back chair. Tell me if you think he gets any within a million miles of explaining magnetism. He does not. I have all of his books. I have his articles. He'd actually show up to college lectures wearing this fine suit and he'd, you know, puffing, uh, you know, uh, a long, uh, you know, filtered, and he'd have a scotch in the other hand, and the college kids thought he was cool. He's got some of his lectures on uh, YouTube. And he'd drink some, uh, you know, drink some of the, uh, the tonsil varnish, and man, man, that guy's cool. He's a PhD professor of theoretical physics. I'm going to listen to him. He's got a scotch in one hand and a cancer stick in the other. This guy knows he's... He doesn't explain anything. Once again, I have his books, so this guy knows nothing. This is the god of... not my position. This is the god of quantum. Greatest physicist of his generation. Sure he is. Just because you apparently lack the background, blah, blah, blah. Yes, virtual part. This is the best part, because I've told you a million times in videos, virtual photons, virtual particles don't exist. They're completely theoretical abstractions. Purely conceptual, like unicorns and leprechauns, they stand exactly on the same plane. Yes, virtual particles are difficult to understand and beyond weird. Well, they're not beyond weird. They don't exist. They're like talking about dragons, unicorns, and leprechauns. But the theory of quantum electrodynamics, it builds upon them. How can you build upon something that's never been the input or output of any experiment ever done? They're completely conceptual. They have no basis in reality. They've never been the uh, electrostatic or magnetic footprint of any particle collision in any particle. They don't exist in any way, shape, or form. Absolutely. Literally, unicorns have more existence than a virtual photon. This guy is actually talking about the real... Quantum, and I looked this guy up. He does have two degrees, and he works for Intel, the computer chip company. By the way, descriptions are not explanations. Built upon the most precise, careful, verified theory in all of science. He literally says something that doesn't exist and never been the output of any experiment ever done. Absolutely no basis whatsoever. They don't exist in any way, shape, or form, period, ever. He says this is the most verified theory in all of science. Now, these are the people that people give authority to. Well, he has two degrees, he's peer-reviewed. He's got a couple books on Amazon, I found out. Now, let me ask me the name of this guy. I've run across these people all the time. They are the, the dog sniffing the little dirty, uh, uh, you know, the dirty back-end stamp of each other dog. I agree with your nonsense. Yes, I agree with your nonsense. You agree with my nonsense. I agree with your nonsense. It just goes in a circle. This is what Tesla meant when he said the people that could think deeply but couldn't think clearly. There are no authorities in debate. You either have the facts, logic, and wisdom to back you up, or you don't. 
I beg you to go watch that 7 minutes and 20 some second video called Feynman Explains Magnetism. Tell me what, just go watch it, I beg you. It's perfect for your education. This is who pe these people think is the god of quantum. I have this guy's books. I'm not like speculating on this guy. I know what he said and didn't say. Oh, you can't, you have no authority. You're just a bold tattooed guy on YouTube. Well, that is true, and yet I still know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm actually drawing to a point here. This isn't actually about quantum, but I'll point out to you, please, once again, that millions of people have, have, have perished the past few years. I'll let you speculate on what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you've, you've been on another planet. Because people bow down to assumed authority. Let's actually dissect quantum and actually get on to the actual key uh, crux of what this video, of course, is culminating towards. Uh, Daniel Comstock, a physicist in Massachusetts Institute of Technology, published in 1917 a semi-popular book on modern theory of atoms. By the way, there's a chart here. I'm going to post a link to it. Just a picture. All you have to do is just show this picture, keep it on your phone. Anytime you run across a quantum physicist or someone that says, eh, quantum, just send them this picture. It's got everything on it. It absolutely destroys everything that they believe in. It's fairy tales. This is, once again, what Tesla said, people that could think deeply but not clearly. He said you have to be sane to think both deeply and clearly. That's a quote from Nikola Tesla. Anyway, Daniel Comstock, M MIT, a uh, semi-popular book on modern theory of atoms, electricity and radiation, is a section on quantum theory and radiant energy, including discussion on light atoms. There is the modern doctrine of light quanta of which uh, Leonard Troland, who's the author of that section, uh, clearly was in sympathy. This is Comstock and Troland, 1917, page 182 through 189. Gilbert and Lewis, in 1926, um, decided to coin the term photon for the smallest unit of radiant uh, light energy. Uh, the outcome of his letter to Nature magazine was not what he intended. In the letter, he proposed a photon being a structural element, not energy. Anyway, this is atomism, of course. He insisted on the need for a new variable, the number of uh, photons, although his theory differed from quantum theory of light introduced by Einstein in 1905. His name was uh, adopted. Actually, quantum uh, theory didn't exist at that point in time. This actually came uh, later, right after 1917, when this garbage became popularized. His name was adopted for what Einstein called das Lichtquant, a light quanta. They want to quantize everything. If you're a hammer, everything's a nail. If you're an atomist, uh, today's scientists are not scientists. They're actually mathematicians. They don't believe if you can't count it, it doesn't exist. But they believe in things that don't exist at all, and they actually think you could count them, virtual photons. Completely impossible. They don't exist. That's not my opinion or feeling or belief. They don't exist in any way, shape, or form. Uh, das Lichtquant. The per person who literally popularized uh, the term quantum, Leonard Troland, was, get this, this is the guy, they think that what I'm talking about is quackery, you know, since I'm being logical and honest. But the very basis of all of quantum was popularized by Leonard Troland. Go look him up. He was a researcher into psychical research and had carried out bizarre experiments in telepathy. So all of quantum, this is a hardcore fact. Once again, that picture uh, below, download it, take a look at it, show it to anybody else. I would love to see you to spread this picture. It's a picture of all this important information on quantum. Just spread it to anybody. Just say, hey, dissect this. Try to disprove it. It's 100%. Um, uh, you cannot disprove it. 100%. You cannot disprove it. The very guy who popularized quantum was himself a quack. It was a quackadoodle. Quack. Cuckoo. <laughs> They'll always point a finger at a splinter in your eye, but they won't acknowledge the giant log in their own eye. Quantum was popularized by a quack. That's, that's a hardcore fact. Go look up Leonard Troland. Nature Magazine, 29 October 1926. Instead of light quanta, one should consider a new kind of atom, or what they called the photon. So they came up with this light quanta, because the word quanta, of course, means quantity. Quantum only means, of course, it's energy, a quantity thereof. They want to quantize everything because they're bean counters. Mathematician is a bean counter, a bean counter is a mathematician. Today's scientists are mathematicians. Max Planck uh, postulated the electromagnetic theory is absorbed or emitted in discrete packets, or what he called quanta. In other words, a quantification of energy. 
This is where we get the word quantum, popularized by the telepathy quack, Trollant. Quantum means a unit of measurement. A measurement is not a thing. I will point out to you the fact that a mile is not a thing in nature, a gram is not a thing in nature, an inch, a pound, a second, a meter, a volt, an amp. All of these are measures. A measure of any kind is not a thing in nature. A measure is a standard agreed upon to measure something in nature or measure anything at all, obviously. Do you get that? A measure is not a thing. Das Lichwant, or a unit of energy, is not a thing. Well, I have a gram of something here, therefore a gram is real. Of course, this is not a gram. It's like, no, you said this is, uh, this would be mini grams right here. Therefore, grams are real. Well, you no, know, a gram is in reference to something. It's a measure. It's agreed upon standard. This is what is real. The term ounce, gram, pound, seconds, these things are not real. There is no such thing in nature as quantum. I dare you to ask any of these people that use the word quantum. I say, point to quantum. You know, show me anything in nature that's quantum. And what they'll do is they'll say, quantum computer. <laughs> So excuse me, but that device you're pointing to, and I know how a quantum computer works, a so-called quantum computer. Everything in there is magnetic, electric, and electrostatic based. I know the component and constituent components and the subcomponent alloys that make up a so-called quantum computer. There is nothing within that computer that you can call quantum. It is purely electrical, magnetic, and dielectric by nature. Nothing in there is quantum. Nothing. There is nobody on this earth who can point to something. Oh, there it is. There's quantum right there. You see it? <laughs> that's, that's quantum. Nothing. I'm not interested in feelings or beliefs or what you were taught. I'm interested in demonstrable, empirical facts. And that's the fact, Jack. Quantum is the smallest unit of uh, discrete measurement of phenomena. For example, a quantum of light is called a photon. photon. And a quantum of electricity is what they're calling an electron. Quantum comes from the Latin, meaning an amount, or how much, of course, once again, a measure. The discoverer, by the way, the principle of what we call the electron, J.J. Thompson, uh, who accurately said what that principle is, which is one unit of dielectric induction. Nikola Tesla and the greatest minds of field theory on this earth, not alive anymore. They all said there's no such thing as an electron particle. People think I came up with that. Like, You're crazy! Of course electrons exist! No, they don't. Well, that's just you. Like, no, I'm actually quoting Nikola Tesla and the great minds of actual science, rational, real science. There ain't no such thing as an electron particle. I'm not interested in even my feelings or beliefs. I'm interested in facts, logic, and wisdom. That's as it should be, of course. Nothing is more fantastical and a travesty of how nature works than is quantum theory. Its very basis has no relationship to reality. Walter Russell. Yeah. I'd like to point one out, another example here, and since I've kind of made my point and destroyed uh, the term quantum, undeniably destroyed it, because it doesn't refer to anything in nature. It is a reference to a quantity, and a quantity is not a thing. An inch, a gram, a mile. Like, I've got a bunch of measures... And this is a digital uh, caliper here. I love this little thing. But there's still some regular numbers on it. Look at that! Yeah, it's got... <laughs> you might think that these are... Like, no, that's a measure. Like, look, there's a quantum. Look, I got a quantum. Like, if a finger were a particle, which, of course, it's not. Look, there's a finger, a quantum of a finger. It's like, no, that's a measure of, like, the width of a finger. It's, people don't think clearly anymore, you know? You can't find people that know how to use their brains. That's why I've been recommending these important books to people that'll help you think clearly. Anyway, I'm literally, and I'm not, you think I'm boasting or bragging, I'm not, but I don't care if you think I do, but I am the number one expert on this world. You notice I didn't say authority. Number one expert on this uh, world on the Terramanada within the earliest pre-sectarian, that's before the Terawadians existed, the, the, the Tibetans, Mahayanism, all that other stuff that came way later. And yet, every book you look into, Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, any place online, type it in Nada. Well, Nada means no so, and Buddhism is different than that Hinduism stuff, because Buddhism talks about no so. So, well, there is no such passage. I know 552 occurrences of the term Nada in doctrine. 22 things that are called Anatta, Rupa Anatta, Veda Anatta, Sana Anatta, Sankara Anatta, Vinyanatta, Nama Rupa Anatta, Ti Isakaya Namisata. 
I know you don't speak ancient Pali. It's been a dead language for over 2,000 years. They say, this is not the soul, that's not the soul, that's not the soul, that's not the soul. If there were no soul, you would simply say, well, there's no soul. Is that the soul? No, that's not it, that's not it. It is very, very common Indian via negativa. This is what happens when scholars... By the way, we came up with this no-soul nihilism regarding original Buddhism. And of course, the term Buddhism didn't exist until the 16th century, actually. Gautama called his teachings Brahmayana, or Path to the Absolute. That's Samyuni Nikaya 5.4, if you want to look it up. Roman indexing. This is common Indian via negativa. Objective negation leads to subjective synthesis. This is not it. That's the same way you find a needle in a haystack. You don't go looking for the needle. Of course, the needle is still an object. The soul is not an object. The soul is the pure subject. You don't go looking for it. You just set fire to the whole thing. Poof, it's all gone. Because hay is very flammable. Poof, there, there's the needle. That's objective negation leading to subjective synthesis. Of course, the needle is once again objective, so don't take the analogy too far. We got this craziness because uh, British and German, we want to find uh, out about the original Buddhism. There's a huge resurgence in trying to understand ancient uh, religions, meanings, and whatnot. And Germans and Brits, mostly Brits, English folk, they went to uh, Ceylon, which is the southern tip of India there, and they're asking those yellow-robed guys that are in Laos, Burma, Ceylon, those are Terawadins. They're not actually technically Buddhists. That would be like thinking a Catholic is an original Christian. It's like, now Catholicism is one thing. That it has, you know, Jesus didn't teach Catholicism. Yeah, that would be like trying to find out about the original teachings of Jesus by asking a bunch of Catholics about uh, Catholic rituals and whatnot. You know, that's kind of a crude analogy. Anyway, they, the, the Westerners actually asked these guys, the yellow, yellow rope guys in Ceylon and India, said, yeah, Terminata means no soul. You know, there's no soul in Buddhism. It's different than that Hindu stuff. Hindu refers to a people. There's no such thing as a Hindu religion. That's not my belief or feeling. That's a hardcore fact. If you want, I'll give you references to that, by the way. Um, anyway, the Terawadins told the Brits and the Germans who uh, reported back, well, Buddhism is different. You know, there's no soul. It's just like this uh, altruistic morality-based nonsense. And like Nirvana means like flushing your soul, which you don't have to begin with, down a cosmic toilet. It's just like a... It, it came back and they basically said Buddhism is oblivionism. And anybody with two brain cells, literally anybody with two brain cells, well, I'm not interested in that, the soul-denying nihilism. Well, it's not. It's not soul-denying nihilism. Um, that, I've been debating that for decades. I always win. People will throw poo at me, not literally. I'm sure they'd like to literally. And uh, try to go after me on uh, the Sramanara. It's like, you want to have a debate on it? I'll debate it. Not only will I debate it, I will completely lay waste to all the beliefs and preconceptions you have about this term because I know all 552 occurrences, all 22 things that are called or not, it is never used pejorative fashion. I know book and verse doctrine. A debate is logical, and if it's uh, regarding metaphysics, it has to be sola scriptura. You know, boom, 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 boom. And all these people say, well, you're not an authority. Where's your peer review paper on the topic? But if you type in Anada or Anatman, same word, Sanskrit and Pali, everything that comes up on Google or Bing is like, oh, Anada means no soul, Buddhism's different than that, Hinduism garbage, and, you know, authority so-and-so who wears the yellow robe and he's the ordained Bada Bing master of... Uh, they'll, they'll quote everything other than doctrine. Everything. There is no denial of the soul, nor does the term Anada make any reference to or even allude to a denial of the soul. Yet, this is what you get from people believing in authorities. You know, they say um, uh, curiosity killed the cat. They should say belief in authority kills cats, or, you know, not literally. What would be a better one? Like, uh, fire burns, belief in authority burns. Once again, millions of people have vanished from this earth permanently because of belief in authority, including my two friends, which I didn't know they were going to do that if they consulted with me. I'm not trying to be egotistical, but they would still be alive if they had consulted with me before they did what they did. But they're gone now. And they believed in authority. And it killed them. That's not my opinion that it killed them. My two friends are dead. And countless ones of you have told me about, you know, your loved ones, brother, sister, friend, yada, yada, yada. This stuff has got to be put down. It's got to end. You got to stop. Like, you know, show me the evidence. Show me the facts. Show me, you know, the 
the evidence, the empirical facts regarding what you say, because, you know, you're just spouting up, oh, you should touch me, look at my degree hanging on the wall back there. Those that bow down to titles and degrees, the best that they get hope for is that they'll live to regret it. My two friends and countless, you know, family members and whatnot of yours, they didn't survive to regret it. That is what did the men. You know, there's a reason why doctors, you know, a doctor is a doctor. There's a doctor, he went to medical school, what do you know? Doctors are the second leading cause of death. You know that, right? You know that, right? The guys that have the authority. There's no such thing as an authority. There's either an expert and a novice. Like, they either know what they're doing or they don't know what they're doing. They're the second leading cause of death. The guys with the degrees. The guys that you think are an authority on something. I mean, a doctor is the first person I'm going to go to if I break my leg or, you know, you need some serious stitches. I'm not going to go there for anything else. But that's just me. I'm not trying to influence anybody on anything on that. That's just me saying that. So, please, please stop bowing to authority. Hey, it's a PhD. What do you know? You're just a fat, bald, tattooed guy. Fat, bald, tattooed guy has got a really, really sharp brain. And he knows the difference between BS and facts and logic and wisdom. And uh, I'll debate anywhere, anytime on this earth on quantum or nada, uh, metaphysics, philosophy, Advaita Vedanta, original Buddhism, of which I'm a consummate expert on. Anytime, anywhere. One either loves the truth or they love their own silly little beliefs. You know, you can't have both or a mixture of both. It's one of the two. Most people are just in love with their beliefs. Well, how dare you? I went to college and I learned this. How, you know, how dare you tell me I don't actually know what I'm talking about because I got a degree. <laughs> Belief in authority is terminal. And if it's not terminal, it's just... My two friends are gone because of their belief in authority. You take your pick, okay? I don't tell anybody what to do. I love reading your comments. Tell me what you think. Sorry I've been so busy lately. Lux Veritas.